Well, welcome to Sophie and Co. I'm Sophie Shevard Natze. As former Yemeni President Saleh is killed by his once allies, the country's civil war takes an unexpected turn. And that is while a Saudi-imposed blockade threatens hundreds of thousands with starvation. What does the future hold for Yemen? Well, I ask Tabakol Karman, a famous Yemeni political activist and Nobel Peace Prize winner. Kol Karman, Yemeni journalist and activist, winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. Welcome to the show. It's really great to have you with us. Tawakol, Yemen's former president, you, Saleh, Sophie. has been killed by his former allies. Uh, first of all, thank you, Sophie, and for um, Arti for uh, uh, inviting me to this uh, program. Um, uh, it's a really uh, tragic to leave the authority peacefully. Uh, we gave him immunity. We gave him also, we allow him to have uh, the money, um, billions of uh, dollars that he uh, took from very important question. What is next after Ali Saleh death? This is a very important thing. Will the situation in Yemen will deteriorate, uh, will continue? This answer should be, th this question should be answered by the Yemeni people. Yemeni people should be now the one happening now. Now it's how can we stop this war? How can we stop this fighting between Yemenis and also between Saudi? Uh, that he will declare amnesty for anyone who stops fighting him. Do you think uh, this promise could end the war? of Yemen, they have to find solution for Yemenis. They have to stop coup, coup and also they have to stop war now to make peace in Yemen. So President Hadi and uh, legitimate you know, government should start dialogue with the Houthis. But also, also, Houthis now has to declare that they are ready. This is the duty uh, of the uh, Saudi and Emirates. Uh, alliance. Now Saudi and Emirates alliance claimed that they are held, uh, helping the legitimate president uh, on... Despicable humanitarian tragedy. That is true. Yemen now is suffering from a huge, from the worst humanitarian crisis. How many people are now uh, suffering from disease, from hunger, from famine? from lack of electricity, lack of... I don't want just... Then there's another question. Yes. Imagine the blockade is lifted right now. Imagine. And the aid is flowing uh, to those who need it. But what if that also opens... It's very important. So President Hadi with the army can make, you know, the solution for ourselves. We should solve our problems, and we can do yeah, it. Yeah, but we can do I it. I mean, Houthi, how can you solve your own problems? Houthi, how can you solve you, your own problems as Yemenis if you're under a blockade and lift this blockade? UN is calling on Saudis to lift blockade. Other humanitarian organizations are, are actually calling on Saudis to lift the blockade. They're not listening to anyone. What deal? What no, dialogue are you talking about? There is the same thing. And by the way, you are asking me about the blockade that is led by Saudi and Emirates, but you don't ask me about blockade that is by led arrest in Riyadh. Why our president had it didn't return to Aden while it's a liberate city? Why Emirates is occupying the most important uh, land, lands, islands? Uh, the ports, the airports in uh, in the south and in the 70% of, of Yemeni uh, liberated countries. Why? Why do they create militias? Why? Surprise, and we'll talk more about the tragedy and reveling in the country. Stay tuned. And we're back with Tawakol Karman, a Yemeni activist and the Nobel Peace Prize winner, talking about the civil war and humanitarian catastrophe in the country. Tawak it's worth it, absolutely. Yemeni people started a peaceful, a great peaceful revolution in 2011. And is the result of conflict, the regional uh, conflict. So it is not our fault, but still we are in our revolution and we will, you know, uh, continue our uh, way and dream for change and we will win absolutely.
Now, uh, you have blamed the Yemen you would want to work with. Do you think that Yemen is divided between uh, a group uh, backed by Iran or by Saudi and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Emirates? No. Yeah, many people, they have they, uh, they, uh, they have a choice to be with this part or with that part. Look, you've been ex exiled from the Houthi-occupied part of the country, but what's stopping you from going back to the areas not controlled by them? Many people, so why don't you go back? As I told you, 70% of the liberated uh, uh, provinces of Yemen from the liberated from the coup. If also there is there is other provinces that isn't uh, uh, with uh, uh, isn't with Houthis and also with the Saudi and Iran, like for example Marib. But I'm thing for the people. Yes, of course. You know. Yes, I am in exile now, but still I, I am in Yemen. A lot of people in Yemen we are. I'm working with inside Yemen, everywhere in Yemen. The people is there, the peaceful people, the revolutionary people. Is According to a cable leak released by WikiLeaks, you secretly arranged meetings with a Saudi official back then and asked for help. I want to ask you directly, is that true? Uh, in the Security Council uh, in New York, calling them to see to the uh, Yemen and to, to know a lot about uh, Yemen peaceful revolution. National C Criminal Court to do its work. And unfortunately, the international community uh, didn't do um, its work, its duty, its responsibility. That how can we face them? Remember, Sophie, when we made our peaceful revolution in 2011, during two years of peaceful method, two years, do you think there should be a military intervention in your country? Can a UN peacekeeping mission save the day? Of course no. Of course no. I'm calling for I'm calling upon Yemenis to start solving their issue by themselves. Yemenis can stop this war. And as, as I said before, with the how can we stop that thing? And other things, there is Arab coalition, Saudi and Emirates should stop there to, uh, to build their country without any um, you know, armed intervention. Tabakol, thank you so much for this uh, emotional future of the country. That is it for this edition of Sophie & Co. I will see you next time.